In today's video, I'm going to share with you the five biggest mistakes that people make when preparing for the CQ exam. And we're going to get started right now. Hey there, my name is Andy Robertson. Welcome to another video. If this is your first time here and you want to learn how to pass the CQ exam, click that subscribe button and hit that bell icon so you don't miss anything new. All right, let's get started. Okay, so I've been helping people pass the CQ exam for a number of years now, and over time I've noticed that people tend to make a handful of mistakes, and I want to share those with you today to maximize your chances of success and help you pass the CQ exam. By the way, you can make these mistakes and still pass the exam. Now remember, becoming a CQE is all about growing yourself and growing your career. And there's only one of these mistakes that people make that guarantees that they won't actually grow themselves and won't grow their career. And that's mistake number five. So stick around to the very end because I want you to hear that one. That one's super important. All right, so mistake number one is to reread and highlight and underline your notes in your textbook. So as a teacher, I've been studying all of the scientifically proven techniques to help people learn and grow and understand new concepts and grow their career. And the research has shown that one of the most ineffective techniques that a lot of people tend to use is they reread their notes, they highlight their notes, they underline their notes, and what they're attempting to do is they're attempting to put information into their brain. And the research has shown that that's really ineffective. This is that difference between passive learning and active learning. Now I have to confess, I made this mistake when I was first studying for the CQ exam. I would go through my notes and I would reread and re-highlight and then highlight in a different color and underline and I was taking notes in the margin. I was doing all of these things that were incorrect and it reduced my chances of passing the exam. Now, like I said earlier, you can make these mistakes and you might still pass the exam, but again, I would encourage you to not make that mistake. Reading and rereading and highlighting is passive learning. What research has shown to be really effective is what's called active learning, and this is actually mistake number two. So mistake number two is people who don't take enough practice exams. So practice exams are a form of active learning. And what you're doing is you're actively retrieving or recalling information from memory. And that act of retrieving information is what forms long-term memory and helps you understand a topic and then learn it and remember it and then be able to use it on the exam and also use it in your day-to-day -day life as a quality engineer. So taking a lot of practice exams is really important to the process. So don't make that mistake of not taking enough practice exams. Mistake number three is studying without an exam date. So I've seen this happen before. People get really excited about becoming a CQE. They buy their material and they say, okay, I'm gonna give myself six months or nine months or a year and then I'm gonna take the CQ exam. But they don't pick an exam date. And then what happens is life gets busy or work gets busy and they say, you know what? Maybe this year isn't the year. I'm gonna delay it, I'm gonna pause it and I'm gonna wait, okay? That's a huge mistake. When you're all fired up about passing the exam, you need to buy the training material and you need to go to ASQ and you need to register for the exam because what that does is it puts some skin in the game. You have to invest your money in that exam date and that exam date motivates you to prepare, right? You need some, some fuel, some motivation to get you through the preparation process. So picking an exam date is really, really important to the process. Now remember, becoming CQE is all about growing your career. So passing the exam is almost irrelevant if you're learning the material and you're putting it into use and you're growing yourself. But having an exam date, right, having some skin in the game, investing your money in that exam price really helps motivate people to prepare for the exam. So I honestly encourage everyone to go out, get your study material, but then get signed up at ASQ for the exam. And I'll leave a link below to how you can sign up for the exam and pick an exam date. Put it on your calendar, motivate you, and get ready for the exam. All right, mistake number four is not putting this stuff into practice. It's your day-to-day -day work. So if you're studying every day and you're learning and you're growing, you should be looking for opportunities at work to put this stuff into practice. And that has a number of benefits. First of all, it provides context to some of these topics. And the more context that adults have, the better we learn. And so if you can find opportunities at work to put these new tools and concepts and techniques into practice, the more prepared you'll be for exam day. And then more importantly, the more you'll see your career grow. You'll be able to solve bigger problems, manage bigger projects, lead bigger teams as you put this stuff into practice. And so I've seen people make this mistake. I've seen people study for the exam, learn the topics, pass the exam, 
and then never use this stuff at work. And it blows my mind because they want to see their career grow, but it doesn't because they're not changing their behavior. They're not putting this information into practice. And this may sound like the worst mistake you might make, but it's not worse than this next one. This is mistake number five, and this is that single mistake that I guarantee will never result in you growing your career or growing yourself, and that's the mistake of cramming. You know what I mean here. People pick an exam date, they don't study, they wait till like three or four weeks before the exam, and they start reading through that material like two, three, four, five hours a day in hopes of cramming all that information into their brain to be ready for the exam date. The reason this doesn't work is because truly knowing and understanding something takes repetition. It takes time, it takes repetitions. You have to space out your learning and you have to learn a little bit every single day, okay? And cramming might actually get you to pass the exam, okay? People actually cram and pass the exam, but they never truly learn the material. And if you don't know something, you can't use it in the workplace. And if you don't have any new skills or topics or tools or concepts to use in the workplace, your career won't grow. So cramming is by far the worst mistake you can make because you might pass the exam, but I guarantee you won't grow your career. And that's the whole point of doing all this. You're investing your time, you're investing your money, and you won't see your career grow. And that's a lose-lose situation. So please don't do this. The analogy is like bodybuilding. Bodybuilders don't wait before the week before the, the competition to start lifting weights. They're in the gym every single day, getting those reps, lifting those weights, so when it comes time for the competition, they, they can do the heavy lifting, they can flex their muscles, and, and that's the same analogy is true for you. Every day you should be working out your brain, growing that muscle, getting in those repetitions so you can do heavy lifting at work. You wanna be able to solve bigger problems manage bigger projects and lead bigger teams. And that happens when you grow every single day, little by little, like you're in the gym mentally, getting those reps in every single day. By the way, the best way to avoid cramming is to have a plan and to work your plan. So when you sign up for that exam date and you pick your study material, you need to create a study plan. Okay, I've got six months or nine months or 12 months to prepare for the exam. This is how I'm gonna break up my studying and this is how I'm gonna study. You need a plan, and then you have to work your plan every single day. You gotta create that daily study habit, that daily process of studying where you're learning and you're practicing and you're, you're taking practice exams to help lock in that memory and slowly build yourself and grow yourself over time through daily practice and daily repetition. That's the best way to avoid cramming. And by the way, I've got this course, Become a CQ in Six Months, that helps you avoid all of these mistakes. Every day I break down the body of knowledge into small chunks where I send you a video lecture and a practice exam so you can watch the lecture, take the practice exam, and we break it up into daily chunks over a six month time period to help you pass the exam and help you grow your career. If you're interested in checking that out, it's at cqacademy.com slash course. By the way, I'd love to hear from you about mistakes that you've made or you've seen people make while preparing for the CQ exam. Do me a favor, leave a comment below about either one of the mistakes that, that you heard about today that you're making or a mistake that you didn't hear about that you think you're making and let's talk about it. I appreciate you sharing. Thanks so much. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Yeah.